Hello again there, folks. This is not a 1v1 this time. This instead is an 8-player free-for-all. Between lots of players, I was just invited to see uh, this new system and what's going on. I don't think the planets are going to hit each other, although they might do, because it looks as though one might be moving slightly faster than the other. Now, uh, looking through the players, uh, apparently it's spawn everywhere as well, which is going to make it really interesting. I'm going to keep uh, Pollock off for the for this game, I think, until uh, I see whether players have or have not spawned on the pole, just uh, to make it easier. Now we're looking, uh, looking at the planets, reasonably small, rather incredibly very small, and a reasonable metal distribution on this one actually, what's the name of this one? This one's called Diddlix. And the other one is called Dom. I don't. I'm not sure if they're identical. I don't think they are. They might be. No, they're not identical. But uh, they both have reasonable metal distributions on them, which is good. Good to see. Uh, if only there was a way that you could see the metal on each planet. There it probably is. I just haven't figured it out. And uh, now we wait for people to spawn in, and then we'll run you through. Hello then, so we've got lots of players spawning in on uh, Diddlix, in fact only three, so five players are going to be on Dom, which is going to be a really interesting game to uh, to watch actually, and I believe Dynamic Alliances is something that is a thing in this lobby, so that's going to make it even more interesting. Now looking at who has spawned on Diddlix, uh, we have in white Zaheda or Hader. Probably just use Team White for the uh, for the benefit of this, and all, of course all their team colours relative. Uh, looking at dark blue here, we have Mead ninety four, going a little bit idle with their commander there after two mechs, going bot factory from white as well after two mechs as well. There. However, down here in yellow, Plankton, a little bit of CPU there, going three vehicle factories for one mech. Interesting start. Given the size of the planet, I would probably have recommended docks over vehicles. Um, but again, I'm, I'm not well enough versed with the current meta to really know the docks versus vehicle game. I think probably a mix might work best on uh, on this on this system, actually, given the size. And going up straight away with point defense there from yellow. And going straight for T2 bots from white. Oh, that's going to be painful when he starts getting attacked, because he's not going to have enough military, I don't think. Uh, by the time he gets that up, however, he will be able to start going spammers. Uh, spammers, blimey, slammers. God, I really don't like hay fever at all. Going up back to blue, we've got a vehicle factory going up. Now, back over onto the Dom planet, we've got action going away already. Light blue Diddlix, uh going lots of bots this time, rather than vehicles as we've seen in recent games. In orange, we have Frank 100, rather, Frank E100. Or Frankie 100, whatever you want to call it. My eyesight isn't particularly brilliant, and that text I find difficult to read. Uh, going four bots, getting a little bit harassed on all sides, actually. There really isn't a great spawn for him, simply because he's, unfortunately, between a whole bunch of players. Pink over here, we have Dom from Team Burning, going four bots as well. Doc's harassing as anyone he can, and even expanding with lots and lots of mechs over there as well, with two fabbers. Really interesting, he hasn't sent any docks over there to assist those. Down here in brown we have Squishy Turtle going two bots and a few walls there, so we're going to have lots of docks going on. In fact, what I'm going to do is quickly just open up uh, that little picture in picture there just to keep an eye on the other planet and see what's going on. Line of walls there going up from Dom, which is going to help in the uh, comboxing that we may assume is going to ensue. And uh, over here in purple we have Ficos12 going uh, for the T2 bots as well. And Grenadiers from their first bot factory. That's not optimum, I don't think. Uh, yeah, it's definitely picture in picture that's doing that weird texture glitch. So, in which case, I'm just going to have to put camera anchors up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip back to north here, put on a camera anchor, change over, flip up to north here as well, and put up a camera anchor. Here we do see an orbital launcher, however which is uh, from Team White there. So uh, not not the biggest of uh, priorities to be getting off planet at this point. The biggest of priorities is to secure your own planet and, uh, and then try and invade the other one, but it's going to be a really tricky game to do so. A really big vehicle blob here over from Yellow as well, 
Uh, so that uh, actually looking at the unit counts from the other players on this planet, looks as though Team Yellow is certainly in the uh, in the run to secure this one a lot faster. Now going over to the big busy planet, we have some uh, some expansions from uh, various different players. Diddlex most notably, I think that oh blimey, I should never use picture in picture again. No, I'll, I'll use it. It's just till it's fixed. It keeps doing this weird business. Regardless of that, it seems as though the raining has uh, stopped a little bit. Ficus 12 there, getting a bit fed up with the Docs meta. I don't blame you. <laughs> Going air as well, not the best given Docs can shoot them, So, and even the commanders as well are so powerful against early game air that it's, unless you can have a stupidly large amount of air units, it's not really going to be able to do very much. And here, uh, torpedoes, I think I saw there, being fired from the commander. That is a bug. Uber cannons as well, and he looks like he might be stuck in his walls there, actually, from Team Orange. <laughs> but, uh, I don't... Does that have penetration? Yes? No? Maybe? No, it doesn't. Uh, at least they've removed the uh, penetration factor from the uh, from the projectiles of this. Or at least it appears that way. Getting off a few hits there. Doesn't want to stand there for too long because he is getting a, a through shot through those walls. But yeah, the turrets used to be able to hit walls and do a little bit of damage on the other side as well. As you see there, the projectiles go through a little bit. I think they've removed the damage from that though, which is which is good. Brown-pink engagement seem to have come to a halt briefly. Because Pink is slightly busy over on this end with uh, Diddlix, who really needs to move in and scout this. I think Diddlix can actually see that with... Uh... Aha! Of course, Dynamic Alliances. So if we see players who aren't fighting, that's because Dynamic Alliances are a thing. I forgot. Blimey. How can I do that? So, Pink and Light Blue are together. There really needs to be a way for spectators to see who's allied with who, rather than just going with that. So, uh... Orange currently has no allies. Pink is with light blue, of course. Let's have a look at yellow quickly. Yellow and white are allied. Purple on the other system, not allied. White, we know, is allied with yellow and blue, which is good. So blue is allied with white, but not with yellow. <laughs> so white here going to be the peace broker between these two. And uh, over on the other system, brown is also not allied with anyone. Uh, which is make, gonna make the other planet a rather interesting engagement. It's gonna be a yellow versus blue game and then white is just gonna sit there not really doing very much. I wonder why yellow isn't actually fighting against blue. Perhaps they're trying to broker an agreement, I'm not sure. But there we are. High blue getting orbital as well in the deep space radar there so you can see whatever is in orbital. Which is a good thing to do. All these walls here, blimey. Splummin trench warfare, it's ridiculous. Inferno creeping through the base, they're getting taken out with boom bots unfortunately. But that's a kind of bot factory, pretty good going there from that uh, one hero Inferno. Lots of bot factories and vehicle factory mix here from Diddlex as well, which is really uh, an interesting to see because, well, we're going Infernos rather than uh, ants, tanks, whatever you want to call them. Which definitely is interesting there, you see the blue and the pink together. Fighting the evil masses. Looks as though Orange is definitely on his last legs here. He is still sat behind walls, but he is taking a little bit of damage, I think. Uh, not quite that wall was taking the damage, but now he's moving out. I think he... Well, he's he's going to die if he doesn't move in, and he's going to die anyway now. So, doing minimal damage to Delix. In fact, no noticeable damage whatsoever. So, unfortunately, Frankie is out of this game. Uh, I'm going to look at purple over here. Lots of bombers. Going to be able to take out those infernos actually because they have no AA. Dillix calling the GG there. Not sure why, simply because... Well, I only ever call GG in defeat and or after the victory is assured if I'm winning a game, which is a very rare occurrence. But let's not get into etiquette of the GG calling because we could discuss that all day. Because everyone does it differently. Kappa there from Ficos. Interesting. 
Just having a, a little scout around to see what's going on. I don't think there are any other alliances going on other than the ones we have already seen. We have Orbital on the other system now with the Orbital Faber there from White. wonder what they're going to do. Maybe put up some anchors. Obviously yellow and blue still. Uh, let's have a look there actually. So yellow is team with white. Oh dear. There we go. White is team with blue and yellow. <laughs> blue again with white. The other system however still apparently no uh, no peace treaties other than uh, other than that of Diddlex and Dom. Totally not rigged. <laughs> There's an Astraeus coming up from Diddlex as well. So I kind of want to get off planet. Now with these Dynamic Alliance games, I have played a few in the past and you can always tell if someone's about to break an alliance because you look inside your base and they have a whole bunch of units just sat there going, Hey! This is a nice tourist attraction, isn't it? And then the next thing you know is that they call off the alliance and your base is toast. Or, well, debris thereof. Because what do you do with toast? You eat the damn stuff. Unless, of course, it's too burnt, at which point you just have charred remains, which kind of looks what these bases are like. Anyway, I digress. So you can see here how the docks are just so good at uh, aircraft. That is, until you have a large enough number coming in from enough different angles. And the docks really start to fall there. But unfortunately, Purple's commander did lose out. Let's have a look that, at uh, that. I think that might have been an Inferno's. Inferno's doing the job there. Yeah, they did get close enough, and the DPS from the docks just finishing it off before the Inferno's just finished it off as well. Really unfortunate there. So, that makes Ficos 12 out of this game. Now we have an engagement between Pink and Brown. Still a few vehicles mixed in with Brown as well. Going up for T2 vehicles, not advised simply because, well, docks can micro so well. Uh, especially Dom's docks. Uh, here we are, ho. Hey, we are ho, blimey. I meant to say hey ho there, but uh, that language is sort of going dodgy. And as soon as Brown is gone, at which point uh, Blue and Pink will probably double team him, they might call off the alliance. But uh, Pink is getting his commander off planet now, so. Uh, Dom going out into space with that Astraeus. In fact, Blue has sent a radar to the other planet as well, so. Uh, whoop. Dom's commander in an Astraeus there, why the commander's just sat there and the Astraeus is going around. There's something dodgy going on with that Astraeus! Ah! Anyway, regardless of that, Diddleck's doing the same thing with their commander, getting it off to the other system. Having a look at the other system, you've got anchors going up. Which I believe Diddleck and Dom can see because of the orbital deep space radars they have uh, they have acquired. We even have shellers now, T2 vehicles. I didn't keep an eye on this planet simply because I didn't think there would be too much of an engagement and too much damage being done. But it seems as though there has been some pelter creeping attempts. Vehicles versus vehicles, which is nice to see. So it looks like this planet is the planet of the vehicles. Inferno's pushing in against the ants here. This really isn't good. The ants could have been microed so much better than that. And the shellers as well, ending up on the front lines against Inferno's. Really, really not good micro at all there, really. You have to keep ranged units at range away from if what are effectively melee units with of these uh, Infernos. They might even lose a factory there. No, not quite, but... Uh, what's that? I'm slightly confused. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> okay, these planets are about to smash. Uh, this is worrying. I didn't even notice that they had got so close. This is really worrying, so the game has to be finished. I think it's in 12 minutes, and unfortunately my recording software puts a big black box right about here for a reason that I cannot fathom. I need to get onto them about that, so I can't actually see the game time, which is why I'll just pop into ChronoCam here. 15 minutes, I don't know. Well, I was told it was about 12 minutes, so maybe it's about 20 minutes, I don't know. But it certainly looks at the rate at which they are closing. I'm going to guess... I don't know, we have about three more minutes? I'm just going to guess. But uh, yeah, as long as these shutters can go up, 
has white disabled their alliance with blue? It appears not, but something is shooting at blue. Oh no, that's just, you know, it was just the shadows, blimey. So yeah, this is where having shellers really helps on uh, smaller planets. And expanding as well constantly with there with turrets, which is going to make it a little bit more tricky for uh, Dilix to... Dilix and Dom to come in there and Squishy Turtle calling the GG on the other planet. Let's uh, let's go back and quickly see what happened there. I neglected that a little bit. Let's go back for 30 seconds <coughs> and see what happened. Double speed as well. So we have Pink moving in with Docks, taking out a whole bunch of the units on the... I believe that's a smash. Interesting. I think the game crashed. <laughs> so we're back in. I believe just before the game crashed and all the smashes happened. I no longer have my camera anchors, but yes, we saw all of that and I focused on that a little bit too much. I apologise. Let's have a look at what happened to Brown, which is what we were in the middle of doing. Now, uh, let's see here. So what I'm also going to do is just hop out in picture in picture here, just so we can see the smash about to happen. Oh, excuse me. Sneeze from hay fever. Always lovely. And there might be another one coming up as well. But hey ho. So we see this little diversion here from Pink, which is really good because it means all of Brown's units are on the other side. And given that Pink and Light Blue were in their uh, alliance, it meant that Light Blue could then swoop in from the other side on an exposed commander and uh, get a kill off there. But... Uh, so that commander died there as a result of that. Let's have a look at what's in the orbital, because if the commanders were both in the orbital at the time of the smash, then they might survive and go into the sun. Because at the time of the smash, no planets are left alive. And, of course, after the smash, you can't actually see the damn planets. Which is quite frustrating, actually. I wish you would be able to... I don't know. The, I wish the camera wouldn't sort of hop around everywhere. But on this system... You know... While the commanders were off-planet and all of that... <laughs> you can see the commander explosion there. That was glorious. So, yeah. They did end up... Dead -did. Dead -did ah, there it was. Look. Sorry, really briefly there. Anyway, ah. Well, there's definitely some sort of interplanetary glitch in there, but it looks as though everybody died anyway, because, well, it seems as though they have fixed the fact that you can sort of keep your commanders in space and it'll make them safe, so there does seem to be a penalty for that, which is good to see. Apparently I can't actually see that explosion, but hey ho, there we are. Good player rate for a free for all. Apparently Meade said he won, but oh, it depends on who's last to explode, I guess. But stalemate, really, a little f fun, interesting game there. Anyway, don't forget to pop any likes, comments, and uh, feedback you may have. Don't forget to share with your friends, which will really help me out. So thanks very much if you do do that. And subscribe for more PA on the way very, very soon indeed. Uh, there may not be very many uploads following this one, simply because I'll be at PAX, um, so I won't be at home recording. Uh, but there we are. Anyway, before I waffle on, as I have done enough for the past five minutes, thanks again for watching, and as always, uh, have a nice day.